Hello, in this presentation I will explain how to compute the robot Jacobian matrix of serial manipulators. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to learn how to compute the geometric Jacobian of a robot. We will see how to compute linear and angular velocities of the end effector given the velocities of prismatic and revolute joints. Later, we will see two examples to compute the robot Jacobian of a robot arm with 3 degrees of freedom and a scalar robot with 3 degrees of freedom. Finally, I will talk about the analytical, analytic Jacobian. In differential kinematics, we can obtain a velocity map between the end effector expressed in linear and angular velocities and the linear or angular joint velocities. The geometric Jacobian J is the matrix that relates those velocity vectors, as it can be seen in the highlighted formula below. This matrix is obtained from the linear and angular velocities that arise after deriving the elements of the end effector transformation matrix. The linear velocity of the end effector is the sum of the partial derivatives of the end effector position vector with respect to each joint, while the angular velocity is the sum of the angular velocities in each of joints. We will distinguish between prismatic and revolute joints since their contribution to the velocities is different. In the figure on the right we can see a representative example of a prismatic joint moving with a linear velocity in the direction of the axis zi-1, without angular velocity. In this case, we can see that the velocity component observed in the end effector is actually the magnitude of the joint velocity, that is, qi dot, in the direction of the zi-1 axis. The angular velocity component is always zero for this type of joints. On the other hand, revolute joints rotate around the axis zi-1 with a magnitude qi dot, that is the angular velocity indeed. In that case, the linear velocity observed at the end effector is indeed as the consequence of the rotation vector t and with respect to uh, the axis uh, zi-1 around the origin oi-1. It is well known that in that case the linear velocity it is therefore the vector product of the vector zi-1 with the vector translation uh, ti-1, uh, which is actually the difference between the position of the end effector and the position of the origin oi-1, represented here by the vector ti-1. The angular velocity in the end effector will be the angular velocity of the joint. In summary, the Jacobian of a robot will be a matrix with six rows. Three of the elements correspond to the linear velocity and three uh, other elements are the three components corresponding to the angular velocity and that matrix will have n columns, as many columns as robot joints. If the ith joint is prismatic, then the ith column of the Jacobian matrix is computed as indicated in the formula above, while if the ith joint of a rebel is, is a revolute joint, then the ith column of the Jacobian matrix will be computed as just as indicated below. The vectors zi-1 Tn, Ti-1, used to, uh, to compute those formulas are actually obtained from transformation matrices that we will be able to uh, derive from the denabit hartman method. The transformation of the ETH-1 link will contain the vectors that we are looking for actually. Now we are about to see a couple of examples to consolidate these concepts. The robot shown in the figure is a robot with 3 degrees of freedom. Actually, we have already worked with this robot in some previous videos. Here, I just include the denabit hardheimer parameters used to describe the position of the reference frame for each of the links. 
From these parameters, we can obtain transformation matrices A01, A12, A23 based on the denabir hadamard transformation matrix. Analytically, this implies the expressions on, that you can see on the top of the slide. From these expressions, or from these transformation matrices, we can also obtain the transformation matrices of each of the links with respect to the robot base just by post multiplying them properly. That's how we obtain matrices A02 and A03, where in this case Q23 is actually representing the sum of joint angles 2 and 3. On this slide, I have highlighted the elements that will be used in order to compute the robot Jacobian, which are the vectors Z, the, the Z1, Z2, Z3, T1, T2 and T3. Therefore, the Jacobian matrix for this particular robot with three revolute joints will be computed as indicated in the highlighted expression. The vector Z0 is by definition the vector 001. After some basic trigonometric formula manipulation, we can obtain a closed form expression for the robot Jacobian. The rank of this matrix will provide an indication about how many independent directions can the end effector move at a given configuration. Indeed, this is a topic for a different video. What I can say here is that for this particular robot, the rank will be a value between 2 and 3, which means that in some configurations we might lose the capability of controlling the robot on a specific direction. In this other example, we will now compute the Jacobian of this car robot with just 3 degrees of freedom. In the table shown, you can see the actual Dynavit hardware parameters used for this robot. From these parameters, we can obtain again the Dynavit hardware transformation matrices for each link, as well as the transformation ma uh, matrices for links 2 and 3 with respect to the robot base. These are the matrices a02 and A03. Then, from these transformations, we get the expressions for the Z and T vectors as highlighted. The Jacobian matrix of this robot uses the corresponding expression for revolute joints in the first two columns and the expression for a prismatic joint in the last column. In this case, after manipulating and simplifying some trigonometric expressions, we can see that joints two, uh, 1 and 2 affect 2x and y linear velocities, as well as the angular velocity in z. By observing rows 1, 2 and 6 of the Jacobian matrix, the third joint affects to the linear velocity in the z component. The analytic Jacobian is the matrix that relates joint velocities with linear velocities and Euler angle velocities of the end effector. This type of Jacobian matrix can be used, for example, when the variables to control are expressed in Euler angles. Actually, the Jacobian is computed from the geometric Jacobian that we have seen before, because there is a relation between the velocity of Euler angles and the angular velocities expressed by the matrix T. The highlighted expressions is used to compute linear velocities and Euler angle velocities from joint velocities using the geometric Jacobian and the inverse matrix T, as we will see. For example, for a representation of Euler angle ZXZ that implies three consecutive turns alpha, beta and gamma, the first around the z-axis, the second one around the x-axis and the third one again around the z-axis, the velocities for each of these angles affect to the angular velocities in different ways, depending on the actual orientation of the reference frame. In particular, the velocity of the angle alpha affects to the z-axis but the velocity of the angle beta affects to the axis x 
and y as a consequence of the initial rotation of the angle alpha. The velocity of the third angle affects to all three angular velocities but due to the resulting rotation matrix of the first two rotations, considering the third column, because the rotation is around the z-axis, remember. By combining these angular velocities we can obtain the matrix that relates Euler angle velocities with angular velocities, as you can see. As you already know, the representation of the Euler angles is not unique and therefore there are multiple ways to obtain the matrix T that relates those velocities. Here I also show the formulas for another Euler angles representation, specifically the XYZ representation, which is the one used by Copelius in software and it is equivalent to the roll PGO representation. Well, in this presentation I have explained how to compute the Robert Jacobian of a serial manipulator. Thank you very much.